In this video, we're going to look at demonstrations that show how physical systems, like a spring system or a building system, which can be modeled by a joined spring system, how they respond to either initial conditions related back to the eigenvectors, or how they respond to frequencies of stimulation that also match the eigenvalues of our problem system. The first system we'll study is the two mass system, two springs k equals three, two masses mass equals one. When we translated this to an A matrix first order system, we had an A matrix that was four by four, and we see that we had four complex eigenvalues. We had two of them with plus or minus 2.8i, and two of them with plus or minus 1.07i. The interpretation that's gonna come with this relies so heavily on understanding what these values are. These four values we chose to mean position velocity, position velocity. So anytime we look at a vector like this, we should be immediately able to interpret these values as positions and velocities. So this vector here somehow involves a zero position for x1, but a one velocity for x1. So the mass one would be moving right. Zero position for x2, but a velocity for x2 that's backwards. And similarly for here, it's usually easier to understand the position values though. What this indicates is there might be something special about pushing left on mass one and pushing right on mass two and seeing what kinds of oscillations arise. We should see just this mode of vibration, which is quite fast. Notice this is a high frequency, 2.8 radians per second, versus the 1.07, which would be a much slower rate of oscillation. And what we're gonna do is see how these play out when we look at a simulation. This window shows where we'll demonstrate the simulation. Notice the green line here, which is the zero level for the first mass, so that's its equilibrium position. And also, this is the equilibrium position for the second mass. What we can control are the initial conditions over here, the damping, and we see the natural frequencies in terms of radians per second here, or in terms of the eigenvalues of the A matrix that defines this system. When we look at the first scenario, which is that there's no initial displacement whatsoever, everything's at equilibrium, then what we're gonna get is a graph of the solution that is just all zero. In fact, nothing happens if everything starts at equilibrium. What we're gonna do first is just experiment with moving this first mass to the right and letting it go. Now we see the graph immediately, but let's animate that to get a sense for what's happening. All right. Note the equilibrium positions and note how the motion seems, it's not chaotic, but it's not simple either. There's some kind of structure to the way these oscillations are happening, but sometimes there's a push at the same time as the pull that cancels out. Anyway, it's pretty complicated in terms of the dynamics. What we're seeing here is a combination of both modes of oscillation, the 2.8 frequency and the 1.07 frequency. What we'd like to do next is choose more sophisticated, more carefully crafted initial conditions so that we only see one of these modes of oscillation. Going back to the mathematical analysis, this mode, this frequency here, will be elicited if we use some scalar multiple of these initial conditions here, where it's position, velocity, position, velocity. So let's do that, negative 0.36 and 0.22. Negative 0.36 and 0.22. Ah, now look how clean this graph looks now. Let's animate that. And here we see a simple mode of oscillation. They're perfectly in sync with each other, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And this is one of the natural modes of oscillation. If you zoom in, if you zoom in on the time graph, you'll find that the frequency of these vibrations is at 2.8 radians per second. It's a little tougher to see from the graph, so we'll take that on faith for now. When we look at the slow mode in a minute, we should see the uh, periods being longer in the graphs. Resetting the simulation here, what we're going to do is now try multiple of our arguments. 
where we just double the first initial condition and double the second one. And as you'd expect, when we look at the simulation results here, it doesn't have any effect on the property that we're getting one mode of oscillation. If we animate this, I've sped up the animation here to make it a little faster, we see exactly the same in and out, in and out type of oscillation where they're moving in counterpoint to each other. Where is that coming from again? If we look at our eigenvalues and eigenvectors, specifically the eigenvectors here, we notice that we have one negative and one positive, and that indicates that if we choose this initial condition, our solution is going to involve that particular vector over and over and over again. Now what about the slow mode? Notice here we can pick an x position of 0.62 and a y, an x2 position of 1.0. Let's try that. So 0 0.62 and 1.0. And let's animate that. Again, notice the equilibrium positions. We've stretched one mass out 0.62 units, the other one out a full unit. And here we see these longer period oscillations. The two masses now moving in synchrony with each other, going in the same direction every time. And again, this is one of the underlying behaviors, and we're able to elicit it by choosing the initial conditions coming from our informed analysis of the eigenvectors. Now again, we can elicit these behaviors not only through the use of initial conditions, but also by using forcing functions that have exactly these frequencies. So if we shake this system at different frequencies, we'll see different kinds of responses. Here we have a similar simulation, only now the only thing we can control are the external frequencies. So there's an external force here that's new. Instead, we don't have initial conditions, we just leave the system sitting there until we start applying these external forces. When we have an external force of frequency 2, what we see is that there's relatively little displacement. We know that this system will respond at the two frequencies, 1.07 and 2.8 radians per second. So let's just see how that works with this external frequency here. You'll see the forcing function acting on the first mass, and you can kind of see the hesitation and certainly the lack of synchronicity between its, uh, between the forcing function's behavior or timing and the natural oscillations. Let's experiment a bit further though and compare that when we use a frequency like 1.07 which is one of the natural frequencies. Here we see the natural collection or the natural alignment between when we're pushing and pulling and what the system will naturally oscillate or the form in which the system will naturally oscillate. This was the slow mode, which was the both masses move in the same direction at the same time. So this is just like a kid on a swing. If it is going to naturally move in a certain way and we assist it by applying a force at that same frequency, it's naturally going to respond with that same partnership of the directions. Again, going back to our eigenvalues and eigenvectors, when we picked 1.07 and we see these values in the eigenvector, that describes the relative motion of the two masses when we force it with this frequency. We should also be able to elicit the opposite direction mode by forcing at 2.8 radians per second, and we will see that next. Absolutely, if we start forcing with a fairly small but perfectly timed function, we see that our oscillations are out of sync with each other, in sync with the force in terms of the timing, but in direction they're out of sync, and they're perfectly balanced, and what we see here is a linear increase in amplitude which perfectly describes the resonant behavior we expect to see here. So again, by carefully tailoring this frequency, we see much larger responses than when we pick arbitrary frequencies that are far away from the two natural frequencies. For example, if we pick a lower frequency, 0.8, we do not see that increase in amplitude. When you pick something at 5, almost no response at all, but if we go back to our 2.8, there we see some interesting things happening. And again, our 1.07, our other natural mode, again, the natural buildup of the energy because our forcing on this first mass, that apl application of the force over time, is in synchrony with the natural modes of oscillation of the system.